Welcome to this uh, lecture number 33 of the course Computational Hydraulics. We are in module 3, Groundwater Hydraulics. And in this particular unit, I will be covering unsteady two dimensional flow using finite difference method. In our previous two lecture classes, also, uh, we have covered this finite difference approach. Uh, but in the lecture number 31, uh, I have covered one dimensional flow, uh, steady flow and lecture number 32 also I have covered uh, steady two dimensional groundwater flow in confined aquifer system with homogeneous and isotropic condition. In this uh, module also I will be covering uh, the two dimensional groundwater flow with homogeneous isotropic condition, but it will be unsteady in nature. So, learning objective uh, at the end of this unit students will be able to solve unsteady state uh, two dimensional groundwater flow equation using finite difference method. Uh, again uh, let us see our structure, uh, this is problem definition. Again, in problem definition uh, from our lecture uh, 1 to lecture 2, we have considered x, y and now in this lecture, uh, we will be considering it is a function of time. So, everything depends on the conceptualization, uh, whether you are considering it as a steady a one dimensional, steady two dimensional or unsteady uh, two dimensional or unsteady three dimensional system. But in this case, uh, I will show only two dimensional case that will be much easier to understand. Uh, so, in this case, let us see what will be our approach for the solution. Uh, problem definition uh, like our steady state problem, uh, this is uh, the case where I want to utilize the time dependent uh, formulation for our steady state problem. So, if we say that the equation is S by T del H by del T and this is del 2 H, this is essentially uh, 2D uh, our uh, homogeneous isotropic confined aquifer flow system, uh, if we consider H as a function of x, y and t only. But uh, again, uh, we can utilize this framework for solving our steady state problem. Uh, for we can start with any arbitrary value uh, or arbitrary initial value and we can uh, go up to a certain time and check whether the variation is still there. Obviously, for a steady state problem, if you utilize unsteady state framework, uh, you should get the same result. Essentially, what will happen this del h by del a uh, del t term this will become uh, uh, very close to 0 and we can solve this problem. So, to solve this problem we need uh, certain uh, parameters. So, obviously, uh, these are the impermeable boundaries, specified boundaries and specified point head values. Now, for our problem, this is two dimensional uh, unsteady problem and in this case S value is 5 into 10 to the power minus 5, uh, T is let us say 200 meter square per day, which is transmissivity and S is storativity of the system. Uh, these are uh, actually initial and boundary condition. Initially, we need to specify the variation of H 
uh, within the system this is not function of t but this is at 0 time level we need to specify the value. Uh, this is the domain discretization uh, the, you already know from uh, your previous lecture class is that uh, if this is the discretization approach with del x and del y. So, we can utilize our finite difference framework obviously endpoints are important endpoints either you consider it in uh, specified boundary or in Neumann boundary depending on that we need to specify the values. Uh, explicit time scheme uh, you already know from your previous lectures that in explicit discretization uh, we consider only one or central point in time uh, from future and for other points uh, we consider this i minus 1 j i j minus 1 i j plus 1 i plus 1 j points there uh, to solve this explicit problem. So, uh, from lecture number 10 uh, uh, we can get this discretized finite difference equation. So, in this case s by t is constant uh, multiplied here and in explicit approach obviously your space derivatives are evaluated at the present time level which is the nth level and only time derivative that includes the future and present time levels. So, this is your future time level this is present 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 present. So, all uh, values uh, we need to use the present time level. If we uh, simplify this one what we can do uh, we can write it uh, by transferring all known values uh, uh, on the right hand side. So, left hand side this is unknown at the future time level other values uh, h i j minus 1 i minus 1 j i j i plus 1 j i j plus 1 these values are known values. So, obviously, in this case we need to define this alpha x and alpha y uh, in our previous case that was 1 by del x square and 1 by del y square, but we need to multiply t and s here. So, t delta t by s delta x square and this is t delta t by s delta y square. Uh, if we see our Neumann boundary condition, Neumann boundary condition uh, we need to write it like this. Uh, why? Uh, because all values we need to evaluate at the future time level. Uh, if we see our bottom boundary uh, this is same. Now, standard steps for explicit time stepping algorithm we need to define del s t del x del y del t h n h n at time step n that means at every time step uh, we should have value available, but uh, initially when n equals to 0 uh, that is the initial condition. And then uh, what is the expectation from this algorithm? updated value of n plus 1 level. Uh, for st a standard explicit algorithm uh, we will have one time step uh, this is our time stepping and within that we will have interior points. So, in case uh, of explicit algorithm first we need to solve the thing for interior points then we will apply the boundary conditions. So, uh, 
first we will solve it uh, for interior points and then all with all known values of the interior points we can calculate the boundary point values. That is why uh, in our uh, uh, previous case, uh, previous case uh, where uh, we have this uh, Neumann boundary condition for top and bottom, uh, these values are actually internal values or values for interior nodes. So, after calculation from the interior nodes I can directly transfer the values to boundary nodes. So, that is why it is written in this form. So, uh, now we can proceed uh, towards uh, the the programming thing. Uh, an interesting point is that we need to satisfy the stability criteria. Uh, we know that explicit scheme is conditionally stable. So, obviously, alpha x and alpha y should be less than half uh, that we have seen from our uh, stability analysis uh, steps. So, if we uh, open our source code which is again from Scilab, okay. uh, this is unsteady explicit. In unsteady explicit, uh, let us start the problem with CLC and clear that means clearing console and clearing variables. M node is the number of nodes in uh, x direction, N node is the number of uh, nodes in the y direction, L x, L y, T max let us say time maximum is 5 uh, units here 5 days maybe uh, this is h a equals to 90, 89, 85, 87 epsilon max uh, this is required for the convergence of the space loop. Uh, delta x, delta y uh, let us say delta t equals to 0.5 uh, we are assuming the delta t value then we have to uh, again uh, recalculate it based on alpha x and alpha y value. Okay. Initially, I have calculated this delta t equals to 0.5. Now, alpha x can be calculated like this alpha x and alpha y based on our definition. So, s alpha or sum alpha is alpha x plus alpha y. Ideally, this alpha s alpha uh, if this alpha s alpha is greater than 0.5. I should reduce this delta t value. So, that uh, we can solve this problem this criterion should be satisfied otherwise we cannot solve this explicit problem. So, if delta t equals to delta t by 2 then again I can calculate delta t and calculate s alpha. So, within this while loop I can check and uh, assign new delta t value based on the requirement of the problem. Uh, it also depends on the parameter values t, s and other values. So, initialization this h o is the old time level h n this is the new time level h o let us say we are starting with the value 90. Uh, because we are solving that steady state problem again with the unsteady state framework. So, boundary condition uh, we need to initially specify the boundary condition h o or initial case or left and right boundaries I have specified 
the specified boundary conditions here. Now, uh, if I see my general format, I have count RMS equals to 1, T uh, equals to uh, 0 here. Now, in this case, uh, we need to do uh, certain things. First is our time loop, this while t less than t max, we have specified that uh, t max value and we are starting from t equals to 0 point obviously, uh, then uh, the program will be executed within this while loop t equals to t plus delta t. So, this is the updated time level. Now, in this case first we need to solve the thing for interior nodes. So, j starting from 1 to n node, i m node, i greater than 1, i less than m node. So, for all interior points uh, we can solve uh, using our standard explicit equation. In this case h n is the new time level value, h o which are specified on the right hand side are all old time level values. Now, after getting these values we need to update the things. Boundary nodes these are specified, uh, you should not worry about the boundary node uh, because boundary nodes are specified values. So, uh, for point A, point B, point C, point D, uh, we can directly specify. Again for left boundary, right boundary, we can directly specify the thing. So, for left boundary, right boundary, including the end points, I have specified the values. Now, with this, we need to specify the things for Neumann boundary condition. So, Neumann boundary condition uh, in this case this is bottom boundary. So, for bottom boundary uh, we can directly write our three point case and we can update the solutions. In this case where we have used our uh, interior points you can see that on the left hand side we have n which is future time level value and h o which is previous time level value on the right hand side. But in case of boundary conditions we are specifying uh, both new time level values uh, both new time level values here on both sides. That means, based on the new time level values only we are calculating the updated values. So, obviously, after getting all information from uh, ab about the future time level, we can calculate the RMSE, RMSE for this, that one. So, RMSE equals to 0 and uh, RMSE equals to RMSE h new minus h old square. That means, I am checking whether the previous time level value and future uh, future time level uh, value both are same or not. That means, for a steady state problem if you are utilizing unsteady state framework uh, these two values should be same and you should get RMSE value close to 0. But this step will not be required for our time dependent problems. Time dependent problems only the specification n n plus 1. What it means that whatever value is available for nth uh, or future time level that will transfer to h naught or h o. So, this means 
that for the next time level when we will be calculating the next time level value then this n plus 1 level value will be uh, the present time level value for the next step. So, that is why we need to transfer these values and this is RMSE calculation we can directly specify RMSE and T and uh, for steady state problem condition for steady state I have clearly mentioned this this is not required for temporal problems. If you have a time dependent problem obviously, uh, you can avoid these steps uh, you do not need to calculate RMSE here and finally, uh, the if this RMSE uh, is less than epsilon max which is the specified uh, range uh, or which is the specified value for RMSE uh, below which uh, the, uh, your RMSE value should be we should break, break means it will come out of this while loop. And finally, we need to uh, draw this x, y and h n, h n means variation at future time level. So, at this level uh, we have seen an explicit algorithm uh, two things are important we have one time loop then in space loop we need to solve interior points first then boundary points then only we can get the solution and finally, we need to transfer this n plus 1 values to nth level. So, that we can use it for future time level as previous time level value. Now, I can uh, run it, I can just evaluate it. So, uh, on the left hand side you can see these are time levels on the right hand side uh, we have values. Now, it is interesting part is this is uh, somewhat different contours we are getting, but the solutions are matching uh, because this side we have specified with 90 this is 89 this is 89 this is 87 87 this is 85. So, more or less uh, again in this case uh, d h by d x uh, d y this is satisfied this is d h by d y equals to 0 these two are satisfied here. So, we can see that you, are, you, are, you have got uh, almost a steady state solution from your unsteady state framework. Now, if we see uh, the standard implicit uh, algorithm, in implicit algorithm for central point only uh, we are using uh, the uh, previous time level value i j point. For other points uh, we can have uh, this is i j plus 1 i plus 1 j this is i minus 1 j i j minus 1 i j for these points uh, we can get the, the implicit formulation uh, from our uh, lecture number 10 uh, we can discretize it and interesting point is that these are all future time level values that means, spatial derivatives are evaluated at future time level that is the basic thing for implicit uh, discretization <coughs> from that is from discretization point of view. Now, we can see what is the solution approach here again we can write everything in simplified format and we can transfer this one uh, this thing uh, on the right hand side. So, uh, we will get uh, everything in terms of alpha y alpha x alpha x alpha y and this is on the uh, right hand side as negative 
because this is there and alpha x and alpha y these are defined like our previous explicit algorithm. Uh, it should be noted that a implicit algorithm is uh, unconditionally stable. So, we do not need that kind of criteria uh, we have utilized for our previous case. Now, uh, we can use our gauss siddle approach to solve this one. Uh, if we use our gauss siddle thing, uh, this is same, this is your right hand side and rest of the thing, this is left hand side. Now, right hand side minus left hand side that is the basic thing for gauss siddle algorithm. So, we have this residual thing. So, residual i j divided by the central uh, coefficient here, a central coefficient. So, uh, now with this format, uh, we need to iterate. So, how it is different from our previous uh, explicit algorithm? Algorithm wise, uh, there is again time loop, but there is no space loop iteration uh, available for explicit. Explicit is one step method, but in case of our uh, implicit algorithm, we need to iterate on the space loop also. For top boundary and bottom boundary, uh, uh, these are the conditions that we need to implement. Now, standard steps uh, like our explicit algorithm, uh, we have a similar kind of steps, but in this case, uh, we need to solve this simultaneously. In our explicit algorithm, we have seen that first you need to solve the interior points, then you need to update the boundary points uh, based on interior values. So, here outside is uh, one time loop and inside we have a space loop. This is time loop or time loop, this is space loop. In space, uh, we need to solve this problem. So, let us see how we can solve it using our uh, iterative approach. So, uh, these parameters are same uh, m node, n node, 300, 100, uh, this is 5 and 98. 89, 85, 87, epsilon max is 10 to the power minus 5, s is 5 into 10 to the power minus 5, t is 200, omega is 1. We are considering gauss here. Calculated parameter values delta x, x, delta t again, uh, we do not need any uh, update for delta t values. We can directly specify because we, we do not need to satisfy any condition here. So, we can avoid that step. Now, initialization uh, h o and h n we can initialize, these are the boundary condition uh, for uh, initial condition and there starts the time loop. So, in this case, this is my time loop and again within this time loop, I have a space loop, it is clearly written. So, time loop starts with t equals to 0, in this case t equals to t plus delta t, again I am starting this space loop uh, to get uh, a correct value at the particular time level. Now, in this case, uh, first, I have interior points within this space loop uh, implemented the boundary points, these are uh, four corner points. Then 
like our previous case left boundary, right boundary all are at h n level. Uh, this should be clear uh, that in case of our interior case also uh, whatever residual we are calculating this is right hand side minus left hand side. Uh, this right hand side obviously that is a specified value or um, a previous time level value and this is present time level value all are at h n level. So, we can directly get it uh, get the RMSE from here. Now, in this case uh, we can specify A, B, C, D values then specified lower uh, left boundary specified right boundary condition and uh, Neumann boundary condition. In implementation of Neumann boundary condition uh, I have used this a one point thing, uh, two point thing, two point thing means this is the first order thing. Uh, again I can calculate this residual and get the values here. Now, this is the end of my uh, loop or now I need to calculate this RMSE. Uh, based on RMSE this space loop uh, will be executed because if RMSE is greater than epsilon maximum obviously uh, we need iterations. So, after convergence after convergence from this uh, space loop space loop again we need to calculate this RMSE, but this RMSE is uh, related to steady state condition. So, whether your steady state value and present time uh, or your previous and present time level values are converging or not. Now, we need to specify this thing that future time level value will be transferred here. So, this is the essential part of your time loop. Now, again we can use this steady state condition to get the solution. And that means, we can check whether RMSE is less than 10 to the power minus 5 here uh, both the RMSEs uh, I have considered as uh, uh, this upper limit is same. So, uh, it should be clear that this part RMSE is for steady state condition uh, if it is a purely time dependent problem uh, we should avoid or you should delete these RMS related lines uh, from your time loop, but if you are considering uh, steady state problem you need to include this, but this RMSE is essential because you need convergence for uh, your say space loop. So, your time loop ends here, now we can plot our x y uh, based on h n values. So, if you run it and select it and evaluate it, so some number of iterations will be required for this case. Again uh, interesting part is that uh, we are quickly getting convergence because del t criteria is not there. So, our uh, time step is larger compared to uh, that used in our explicit case. So, uh, we are getting solution uh, which is similar to our steady state case uh, you can see uh, the variation here uh, 90, 89, this 85. So, obviously, uh, this implicit scheme is much better compared to our explicit scheme uh, and that we can see from the solution approach and uh, our algorithm also uh, this is much faster in this case because you do not need uh, that uh, time uh, restriction or uh, your 
time discretization restriction for uh, your implicit case. So, in this particular lecture, uh, I have covered uh, unsteady uh, two dimensional flow and explicit algorithm I have draw, uh, covered in this code is unsteady 2 D explicit uh, and this unsteady 2 D implicit iterative. So, you can uh, use uh, these codes uh, to get uh, different solutions either for steady state or unsteady state problems. Uh, next uh, lecture class I will be covering uh, the finite volume uh, solution approach for this uh, groundwater flow problems. Thank you.